my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path Beadstore.com. I'm so glad you joined me for Kaleidocycles Part 2. So if you missed Part 1, it came out last week. I will put a direct link to it here below in the video notes. Um, but in last week's video, I showed you how to make our first triangle of our Kaleidocycle and how to zip those together. So, I hope that you listened to me last week and you only made six triangles like this and zip them together so that you have three total pairs of that design because it's all you need, okay? That was last week's triangle. This week's triangle is going to be different. Now, before I get started showing you this week's triangle and telling you the differences of those, I've had a couple of questions that I wanted to answer really quickly. Um, the biggest question I've got this week is how do you join the beat along? You have to do nothing. All you have to do is just watch last week's video and watch each of the parts and make along with us as we go through this process of making these kaleidocycles. Number two, are we going to use the same colors for all the triangles? And that answer is yes and no. If you want to use the same colors for all of your triangles, you are more than welcome to. I will not be doing that. I don't want all my faces to be the same color. So I am going to be using different colors. I'll show you the colors I'm going to use today. They're nowhere near the colors that are on the pattern, but I will show you the colors that I'm using, or you can choose to use the DB numbers that are actually on the pattern we're going to be doing today. So again, completely up to you. Number three, are all our triangles going to be put together the same? No, they are not. This week's triangles are going to be put together differently. So as I progress and I show you today's triangle, I will show you how it's gonna be different and exactly tell you how many of those that you need to do for the project. We're making four sides to our kaleidocycle. Each side has six triangles, okay? So we'll have six, 12, 18, 24 total triangles, but you will have six of each of the four designs. As you've seen in the intro, these are my triangles from last week. Remember, we zipped them together in the center with our size 15 seed beads. Now, for all of my 15s, I'm using this matte clear. I also have a solid clear and a 15 that would work. Um, today's is going to be a little bit different. When we make our triangle today, we're not going to be zipping it as we did here. We're going to be making hinges, and hinges are going to be a little bit different, and I'm going to explain that as we go through. In today's project, I'm going to be using the Eslon Fire. Um, this is the .007, which they call an 8-pound. You can use whatever you want. This is just what I am testing out. So, it does come off of, on your fingers, so my fingers will get a little dark as I work. Um, so, no worries there. The color A I'm using today is DB411. DB411. Okay, the B that I'm going to use today is DB021. The black here is DB010. This kind of pumpkin color is DB664. And then this matte navy is DB377. Now, my beads that I'm going to use here for the hinge beads, it's an 11 0 Delica and it's 2102. But again, this here is five colors. You had more than that last week when you did your triangle. So again, if you want to use these same colors you did last week in your triangle, you are more than welcome to. And we're going to start out with a little bit more thread today. So these we used about a yard. I'm going to tell you to be safe and use about a yard and a half to a yard and three quarters on this triangle. Each of these triangles that I'm going to show you how to make today. Okay, just a quick note about today's triangle pattern and where you need to go and get that pattern. So today's triangle pattern is actually one of the patterns that is gonna come out in the upcoming Contemporary Geometric Beadwork Pattern Book. 
and that is not out for sale yet. These were things that were shared with me when I went to the retreat, the Contemporary Geometric Beadwork Retreat, um, back in May. So, I do not have authority or clearance to give you the whole entire project pattern, but what I will do is I will take the snippet of today's triangle, and I will put that as a free instant download on my website, and I'll put a direct link to it down here, and I'll link um, last week's and today's in that free pattern section so that you can go in and you can download just a triangle for today because it has the word chart and everything for it, but you will need that to follow along with me while we do today's triangle. If you want to follow along exactly with the colors that will be shown in the pattern, these are the DB numbers here of the beads that we were using for A, B, C, D, and E. And it says that they used 1.2 grams per triangle for the, what they're doing in the pattern. So these are your DB numbers and these are where they with A, B, C, D, and E. So just like our pattern last week, we are, you'll see the same type lingo. So for those who made last week's triangle, you'll see a lot easier or have a lot easier time reading the chart. We're gonna do 12 rounds, just like we did last week in our triangles. And the beads here are the beads or the number of beads that you are adding in each round. So you can see we start out with three and we end all the way with 36. So round one, String, E, E, and B. PT means pass through all three beads twice and exit the first E. So, I'm going to go ahead and pour me out a few of my beads here. I like to pour just a few out on my tray. I love this bead easy system because I'm somebody who loves to keep my beads organized. And so I love this bead easy system because it keeps everything tidy. And then I just pour out a few beads like I did here. So E, E, and B. And then we Bring all of those, and you want to leave enough tail that you can go back and stitch through a few of the beads. So I'm gonna leave about four inches. I'm gonna pass through them to bring them into a circle. And then I'm gonna pass through all of them again. So pass through the two Bs and the E, and don't skimp on this step. This is gonna help to keep the center of our triangle together. And so you don't want to skimp on the step. Now, I have not tried it yet, but um, you can see here, I already have the black on my finger from the S-Line Fire. So I have not tried it yet, but I'm betting that just like Fire Line, you can take and go over it with, um, with a, like a dryer sheet and it'll take some of that darkness off. All right, so you can see here, I'm exiting the first B of my set. So that was round one. Round two, we are going to string two A's, then a B and a C, and a B and an E. So if it's in brackets, that means we're gonna pick up those two beads together. So the first one here is AA. So I pick up an A and an A. My thread is coming out of a B, so I take my needle and I go right down through the very next B. So what I'm doing is I'm making an increase here. And some people call this a herringbone increase, but this is what I'm doing. I'm starting that increase and I'm just gonna turn it just a little bit here. The next one was B and C. I pick up those two beads and I come down through the next bead there. turn it. It's just easier to turn it. And then the next one is a B and an E. So you pick up a B and an E and this time I'm going to go through the first B that I started with and then the first A which is right above it. So this is my step up so I'm going through two of those beads. 
and I'll go ahead and pull this all the way through just like that all right so that was row two row three it says two D's so again when you see it in brackets it means we pick it up together then we'll pay OD and A then we'll have two A's pay OD and A we'll pick up a B and an E and then we'll pay OD an A so I'm coming out of an A. I'm picking up two Ds. And I take the needle and I come down through the very next A. Now I pick up an A and I'm just going to pay OD with an A. So I pick up an A and I go through the next B. The next one in my bracket is two A's. So I pick up two A's and I come down through the C. I'm gonna pay OD an A. So you pick up an A and go through the B. And then the last one for this row is a B and an E. And we take the needle and we go through the E, through the very next bead there. And then we pay OD an A. Now remember, this is the last bead on the row. So when we put this bead on, we have to step up. So I will be going through an A and a D. So I'm going through these two beads at the same time so that it finishes out my row. So that after row three, this is what you should have. Now at this point, you are not gonna be able to see the pattern good, and that's okay. Trust the process. So we did round one, round two, round three. All right, round four. Remember, these we pick up together. So I'll do two E's, and then I'll pay OD a D and a B. I'll pick up two C's for the increase, and then I will pay OD a C and a C. I'm not picking up two C at the same time. I'm going to pay OD two C's, okay? A increase with a B and an E, and then I'll pay OD an A and a D. So just remember, when you see like here two C or three A here, I'm gonna be picking up an A, and then an A, and then an A. I'm not picking up three A's at one time. Okay, so for row four, let's see what we got here. Row four was two E's to start us out. And we come down through the next D. It's the very next bead here. Then I'm gonna peyote a D. and then a B. I'm gonna increase with two C's. Take the needle and come down through the very next A. Anytime I do the increase and I pick up two at the same time, that means I'm just going down through the very next bead. Now, I'm going to pay OD two C's. So, again, this means I pick up a C, and I pay OD, and then I pick up a C, and pay OD. The last increase is a B and an E. I come down through the very next E. for the increase, and then I pay OD an A, and a D. So remember, the last bead that you put on for each row, this is where you have to finish the row, and then you do the step up. So I'm coming through both these beads at one time. 
so that at the end of row four, this is what your bee should look like. I know I have four rows because I'm gonna start here in the corner and count the beads sticking up. So I've got one, two, three, and four. So you can see my four rows. So now we can take, we can mark off row four, and this is gonna put us on row five. So again here, you can see our increase with the two beads. Then we're gonna peyote, increase, peyote, increase, and peyote. So this is the beads that we will put on for row five. And this will be the last row I'm actually gonna work step by step with you because I think by now you should kind of understand how that works. So I'm, especially after last week's video. So the first increase, I've got two A's and I go down through the E, which is the very next bead there. I'm going to peyote an E, a D, and an A. So now I'm here to a corner, so that means I'm an increase. The increase is A's, so I pick up two A's, and I come down through the next C there. Now this is where I'm gonna put on three A's. So again, it doesn't mean I'm putting on three A's at one time, it just means I'm gonna pick up an A and peyote, an A and peyote, and an A and peyote. So I'm on my last increase now, so I'm gonna pick up a B and an E, and I'm gonna come down through the next E And then I've got to peyote an A, a D, and then my last bead for the row is an E, so I pick up the E, and remember, I finish the row, and then I step up, so I have to come through these two beads right here. so that now after row five, this is what my triangle will look like. Now, when you work row six through 12, a lot of this is easy, especially when you get here and you're putting on a lot of the same bead. Um, it becomes really quick and you don't have to look at it, which is great. But if you get confused about where your beads or you get confused about constantly having to go back, you can take and lay out your beads on your mat the way that you're gonna pick them up. So for step six, I can lay out, I've got 2D and then an A, E, B, C, and then I would have two Cs And then I've got four C, so one, two, three, four. A B and an E. And you wanna make sure you keep them in place. So B and an E together. And then A, D, E, in A. So if I lay them out, these are the beads that I would pick up for step six. The biggest thing to remember, pick them up in the direction you started. Don't start here. Start here and pick up your beads and stitch them just like you normally would. But you are going to work rows six through 12 to complete this triangle. Once you finish all 12 rows, then you're ready to add those um, hinge beads that I was talking about. So when you add those and you fin or when you finish that last row, you're going to be coming out going towards the side that we need to put those hinge beads on. Because what's going to happen is when we put them actually together, they're going to go together like this so that these center parts here will make a straight line and our little um, almost arrows that we've made will be going opposite directions um, like these are here. 
So this is the side that we want to put those hinge beads on. <clears throat> Our hinge beads are gonna be a double row of size 11 delicas. And this is what I said about you want another color that's gonna be completely different for those hinge beads so you can tell what is the hinge bead and where it's supposed to go. So when you get here to the corner, I'm not gonna put anything. I want to be coming out of my first A bead here. So I'm not gonna put anything right here. I'm gonna come out of this next bead. Now I have a little blue bead that is a little wonky. And um, when I do this next step, or when I do this step, that will straighten that bead up so I won't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna come out of the A. I'm gonna pick up a hinge bead and come through the next E. That's gonna be my bead that's sticking up. And I'm gonna do this all the way around until I stop here, or all the way down, not around, straight down until I stop at this bead. I don't have one here at the very top and I don't want one here at the very bottom. So I'm just gonna go through and pop in one hinge bead between each bead all the way down. And again, I'm doing it a totally different color so that I can see where my hinge beads are and where they will need to be connected. So when you make these, you are gonna do these hinges exactly like I'm doing on all six of your triangles, okay? All of your triangles will have hinges. And they are getting a double row of hinges. So I've came down and I've come out of the last C bead here at the bottom. You can see I'm not adding one here at the bottom because I didn't add one here at the very top. Now, I need to do a turnaround so that I'm coming back out of this black bead that I'm coming out of now. I need to be coming out of that bead again. So I'm just going to um, stitch down through a few beads here. And I'm gonna have to come around to this side so that I can turn around, get my needle turned around to come out of that same black bead that I was just coming out of. Now I have a bead here that's got a really, it's really tight in here now. There we go. Okay, so that now when I turn back around with my needle, I'm gonna be coming out of the black bead in the direction that I need it to come out of. That's my C bead. Okay, so I'm coming out of that C. Now I'm gonna pick up another hinge bead and I'm just gonna work my way back up. I have a hinge, I'm coming out of a C and I'm gonna go through the next C. So that when I do that, that's gonna put in double beads right there. I'm gonna do this all the way up. Pick up a hinge, go through the next bead there on that base that would have been sticking up so that as you work, you will see double beads all the way up. So this is a time that you wanna be careful and really pay attention and not get your thread caught on hinges that are already in place because that will be definitely something that can happen. So pay attention to that. Okay, see how it got stuck there? So you just pull it. <laughs> and fix it. It kind of helps too if you'll put your thumb at the lower hinges that you've already made. That helps a little bit as well. All right, now what I would do at this point, I have my hinges in place and what I would do is I would leave this thread because you're on, let's see, four of these, I would leave the thread. 
on two of these, you can go ahead and stitch through and anchor your thread and get rid of it. But on four of them, leave the thread. Because what's going to happen is now on four of these, not on all six, just on four of them, now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to do a stitch in the ditch and put some 15s here so that we can connect these two together. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna work around so that I'm coming back out of that same gold bead that I'm coming out, but I wanna come towards the um, hinge beads that I have in place. I came through the gold bead and then I came through one of my little hinge sections here. And you can see I've already gone ahead and I've got a second triangle ready to go so that I can show you how we're gonna connect these together. So I'm gonna use a size 15 seed bead and I'm gonna take my needle, pick up a size 15 seed bead and then come through the next hinge bead. And I'm only gonna work down one side of the hinges. So I'm just picking up, going through and I'm gonna do this all the way down. It took me and a friend forever to figure out on this pattern about the two hinges on this new way that she, uh, Kate, is showing how to do this project. So, um, thankfully we figured it out, so now you don't have to. So you're only gonna do this one side. And now that I'm here at the bottom, coming out of this bottom on the, I'm gonna call it the back side of the hinge here, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put my other little 15s up that I've got there. And then I'm gonna take the other piece and put it together. When we put them together, they're gonna be put together just like this. And I am gonna set these side by side because if I can put the back in here, I need to connect the back side here. So I'm gonna hold these kind of side by side to start. And I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come up through one of the hinge beads here on the back side of this triangle. And then before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and take my needle and go through that last 15 that I put on. And I'm gonna hold these beads in place as I pull the thread. I'm gonna go through the back hinge, the next back hinge bead. So you can see how it's lacing almost itself together. And then I come through the 15 on this side. And I can also flip this over now so that I'm only work, you know, I don't have to keep doing that. I can basically work on the one side. But each time I'm just going through a hinge bead on one and a 15 on the other to connect these two together. So sometimes you can get through both those beads at the same time and sometimes you can't. So just do what's comfortable for you. Go through those beads. Just make sure you're keeping it straight and you're going through the correct beads so that it's not wonky when you get it connected. So once you get up to the top and you've got them connected, you'll notice you have a, an open end and then a connected end. That's exactly what we want. So now I'm gonna take my needle, I'm gonna work back down to reinforce and get rid of my working thread. Once you have your thread finished off, then you are going to make another component exactly like this one. So you're putting in the two hinge beads and you're connecting them. Now, once you have that complete, then you're gonna take your other two components that you've made. One is going to get just hinge beads. 
The other is going to get hinge beads with your size 15 seed beads in one side. The reason that we're doing this is when we put our triangles together, okay, so when I take and we get these zipped up, let me grab my other one here so that I can show you. Here we go. Because this is how they will lay. What you have to pay attention to while you are putting these together or getting them ready to lay out to put together. The triangles here on each end, once we have it, everything connected and we fold it, these are going to be to connect the ends of our pieces. So you're not going to do anything to these yet. But what you wanna pay attention to is your hinges, your open hinges, they need to be facing towards you like this because what will happen when we actually get our next set put together and then we make our fourth set, our fourth set is going to be connected to our open hinges that we have. So you can see that even here on the one that I've done just my 15s, I've made sure that they're to that back side. So that way when I get them added, oh, I think I gotta do it this way, this way over here. Yeah, so they're added to that back side so that when I put everything together, just like this, I will have the open hinges, all the open hinges here on the top. This way I will be able to zip in my fourth ones and everything will be good. So again, we're making two complete sets like this and one of each of these. One with just hinges and one with hinges and 15s. All right, friends, that is our second triangle or our second side to our kaleidocycle. Now, we are going to do, just like I said, two sets that are connected exactly like this. So this is one. So I've got to make one more complete connected set. And then I'm going to have two individual triangles with those hinge beads. Okay. So these are done different than last week's. So we're going to make six triangles just like this so that we will be ready for our third next week. So remember, head over to offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com where I will have that pattern as a free instant download. You do have to purchase the free pattern so it will send you, but it's only to send you the download links, okay? That's all it's for. So I will have these available for you there. So, and I will put last week's on there as well. So that way you will have both of those in one place. And I will just add on to that each week. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Good luck with our side two of our Collider Cycle. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.